Welcome to LNP Renewable Center. Today, we are going to discuss some of the basics of the electric vehicle part 19. Okay, if you have missed out part 1 to 18, no issue. Please subscribe to the channel. In our channel, we had created the playlist. So, we had classified the session into 25 parts. If you have missed out any session, no issue. In our playlist, we had provided all the details by, in, uh, in, uh, by going in, inside the playlist. You can watch all the missed out parts. So, in our discussions, we might be using so many abbreviations and short forms regarding the electric vehicle technologies. So, if any doubt, kindly please refer to those abbreviations. So, what are the things that we are going to discuss today in the session? We are going to discuss what are the different types of cell balancing techniques available in the for the electric vehicles. What is active cell balancing? Okay, and how it is done? And how a passive cell balancing is done? And what are the functions of a communication system in the VMS? And what are the significance of state of charge? Okay, what are the design consideration for charging system in the electric vehicles? Okay, how charging and discharging is done? And what are the different types of charging states in a lead acid and a lithium ion battery? And what are the thermal limits of a battery charging? So, when we get into the technique of cell balancing or cell, uh, cell uh, charge equalization technique, we have two balancing methods, one is active balancing and the passive balancing. Okay, because uh, this, who is doing this job, balancing job? This battery management is doing, uh, battery management system, that is BMS is doing this cell balancing job. So, we can either perform the cell balancing with two different method methods, one is active balancing and the second one is the passive balancing. So in the active balancing, we are using two things. One is capacitive type active management, and the other one is the inductive type capacitive, uh, inductive type active management. So what is the difference? See here, these are all the batteries. Okay, so we are connected a uh, capacitors through a uh, switches across the these terminals. Whereas here we had connected the inductive element across the battery cells, individual cells through switches. Okay, what will happen in the active balancing method? Okay, irrespective of uh, this available voltage, what will do to maintain the high efficiency of individual cells? Okay, if, if while um, while verifying the voltage, if this BMS forms any uh, low voltage, what it will do? It will uh, try to charge the insufficiently charged cell immediately through this capacity inductive load approach okay it will load the cell charge into the storage element and transfer it to the insufficiently charged cell immediately okay so this is how the active cell balancing is done using this capacitive type uh, active cell balancing and as well as through the inductive type and Active balancing we can also perform using the transformers. See here on the primary side we will have a primary one and on the secondary sides we will have these cells through the switches. Okay. So, mostly for discharging this bottom balancing will be done. So, it will identify the weakest battery cell of the battery block and it redistributes the charge from the entire battery block. For the top balancing it will happen during the charging. So, it evenly spreads the energy surplus for the strongest battery across the entire battery block and it will balance the losses for one battery block around 1.5 watts. Considerably lower than 18 watts for a com comparably passive system, more number of inductive components. And in the case of char a passive charge equalization method, here we will have we are using the resistors and along with that we have a switches across these uh, terminals. So, what will happen? Irrespective of the voltage across the individual cells, it tries to evenly charge okay, um, the entire individual cells which is present inside the battery. So, for example, it also prevents from overcharging. Okay, the resulting heat limits the maximum current. During discharging, on the other hand, the available energy cannot be used to prevent the deep discharging of the weakest cells. So, using the passive charge equalization, we are improving the charging process, okay. So, as we uh, told earlier, in the battery management system, we are doing the individual cell level measurements, 
okay cell voltage cell temperature okay and as a pack also we are measuring the current bus voltage pack voltage and pre charge temperatures and isolations also so what is the purpose of this communication systems so pack management unit and module management unit both are performing this communications acting as a communication system in the bms so mostly this system will be monitoring the temperature voltage of the individual cells okay so but you know there will be so many uh, number of circuit boards will be available inside a bms okay so what will happen one will act as a master that is the main module and the, all the sub modules will act as a slave circuit boards so this master will be calculating the entire thing it will do the computation process everything and it will command the slave circuits what to perform whether they have to do the active balancing or they have to do the passive balancing so all these instructions will be communicated through these systems and what is the importance of soc that is state of charge it is it plays an important role in optimizing the vehicle energy management it improves the battery capacity and it, it makes us to use the better energy utilization and it prevents our batteries from overcharging and over discharging and it also ensures the safety and long service lifetimes of the batteries and what are the design consideration of a charging system in an electric vehicle first thing is that we need to know what is the charging power and we need to know where we are going what sort of infrastructure we are going to make for charging and what are the standard decision that we are going to follow and uh, power electronics is very much important because for converting and in conversion process or for the inverting or boosting everything we need power electronics so as we know earlier so when we try to know how the charging and discharging process is happening in the lead acid battery we have a electrolyte that is sulfuric acid we have a cathode of lead and we have a anode that is lead oxide so during uh, charging or uh, discharging process what will happening the electrons will move from cathode to anode so this is the nothing but a discharging process that is utilization process when charging that is the same reverse uh, action will be happening but when you go for a lithium battery so this is the equation okay this is how uh, things are happening because for the lithium battery the aluminum will be the anode and the copper will be the cathode we have a electrolyte medium that is lithium okay and we have a separators also with pores so during charging process this lithium magnesium oxide is getting converted to lithium carbonate and uh, individual cells and during the discharging process so the same thing is happening reverse same thing is happening so we have so many charging states either the stage 1 can be a constant current charge and the stage 2 will be the topping charge and stage 3 will be the float charge so this is how the basic charging happening in the lead acid and the lithium ion batteries so as we told earlier um, lead acid battery is little heavier when compared to the lead lead ion that is size will be very big weight wise if you see lithium ion is little heavier but when we, when we made a thermal limits for a battery charging lead acid is as a very good charging temperature because below 0 degree celsius we can't use lithium ion batteries it is a biggest disadvantage okay below 0 degree celsius we can use this lithium ion for charging it won't get charged but this lead acid battery up to minus 20 degree celsius we can perform charging in the lead acid batteries that is the reason why still now this in our uh, battery industry lead acid battery is playing a very major role because when you go to the cold temperatures there it is very difficult to use this lithium ion or nickel cadmium batteries because below 0 degree celsius it is very difficult to charge them even for discharging there is no issues okay from minus 20 degree to plus 20, 50 degree celsius we can do discharging but charging will happen only between 0 to 45 degree celsius for this lithium ion and the nickel cadmium batteries whereas for the lead acid battery the greatest advantage is that we can charge the lead acid battery even at minus 20 degree celsius that is the biggest advantage of this batteries 
Thank you so much. Please subscribe and press the bell icon. If you want to know more and learn more, you can contact us. We have provided the contact details here. And if you are very much interested in learning the PLC programming, we are providing PLC programming training along with the certification. This is ISO 9000 2018 certification for Siemens Alcatel and Delta PLCs. And if you are really interested to work in the GCC countries, we are also providing training along with the certification for building management system and building automation control system. And if you are really interested to establish a diesel ID system in the places where the EBOBR is not available, then you can contact us. And we are also providing solar on-grid, off-grid and hybrid application design, installation, testing, commissioning, consultancy, training supports also. And if you had a plan to establish the fencing for your agriculture farms, then you can contact us. We are providing solar fencing as a kit. And if you are really interested in electrical vehicle basics, along with the certification you need or access control system, then you can contact us. We are providing the contact details kit. Thank you so much.